Hey YouTube, Peter Bill Knife Guy. And today we're gonna be taking a look at a knife that I never even wanted to review. That's right, today we have a Watchman product that, uh, backstory on this guy is, the first Watchman product that I ever ordered, and the only one up until this point, was this Watchman, what are we looking at here, WF204 in uh, 14C28N. It's basically an Azula, SE Azula 2, I believe, knockoff, um, but well done. It's been a good knife. I, I, EDC, I EDC'd this thing for a hot minute, and I, I, I dyed the scales black because they came this atrocious orange. Um, I don't know if it's a natural color or whatever, but I didn't like it. So yeah, a lot of use on this knife, and I figured they have another one with a little bit longer blade and a little bit better, a little bit better handled geometry, I guess. I don't know. It looked like it'd be a little more comfortable. Not that this is uncomfortable, but uh, you know, wanted to try something new. So what I do, I hopped on Amazon and ordered it. And then this turd showed up. <laughs> and I call it a turd, but it's actually a pretty decently well done knife. Um, I hit up Amazon and I'm like, hey, you guys sent me the wrong knife. This was all online, you know, you can do it without calling somebody. So what did they do? They sent me the exact same thing again. Now, <laughs> Amazon has a lot of horror stories like this, but there is a silver lining, especially when you have Prime. Um, I don't know if it's just Prime, but uh, being a Prime member might have helped. Um, what they told me was, for my inconvenience of ordering these twice and getting these the wrong, the same time, um, that I can just keep the knives and they refunded me back my money, which was kind of cool. So now I have these two knives for free. Um, and sometimes free isn't good, but in this case, you know, it's a decent knife. I would have never probably picked it myself. They both came pretty sharp. Uh, one I did strop up. Yeah, they're both pretty sharp. I believe I stropped up this one. Uh, it has a little bit steeper angle on the edge. The edges are kind of wonky a little bit. You see the bevel on that side and the bevel on this side smaller. So it's not perfectly centered. Yeah, you can see that on the blade too. But good enough. I mean, these things are, I think, are $29 or $31. They're not that expensive. Um, kind of a bushcrafty knife, if I'd have to guess. It does have a pretty comfortable handle, a little bit small. Spec-wise, we're looking at, we're looking at just under, just over nine overall. We got four and a half of cutting and our inner grip. Yeah, where well, your finger sits kind of narrow. It's about three and a half, you know, four if you squish your fingers in there. And that's the case I'm in where my fingers squish in there. But, you know, it's a small knife. Um, would this thing be a good camp knife? Probably. It kind of bushcrafty looking to me, but it is a hollow grind. And I am just not a fan of hollow grind, not even in a little bit. I don't think any knife should be hollow ground, but that's just my biased opinion. It's in DC 53 steel, which is kind of like a, uh, I don't know what from what I read, it's a little bit tougher of a D2, you know? So depending on the heat treat that they did on this and if it is actually DC 53, because these Watchmen knives are made in China, um, we'll determine whether it's good or not. But since I have two of them, that means I could be a little extra rough on one of them. <laughs> because I am going to throw one in the knife collection. Why not? Um, it does have a relatively thick spine. I don't know how big it is. We're looking at, I don't know. Yeah, about just a hair under three sixteenths, if I had to say it. Um, you know, it's, it's a relatively robust tip. The other DC 53 knives that I've had have held up well, so... We're gonna tip test this thing, see if we can break it. Maybe not try to break it, just see if it does break. We have uh, copper pinned on handles that, uh, you know, copper, copper. I do not know what kind of wood this is. I, uh, I didn't do any research on these. <laughs> so you're just getting my just straight up freaking opinion. I mean, they're, they're nicely done. They're, their fit and finish on these are pretty good actually. Um, no gappage or anything on either one. 
the handle is and the scales are pretty smooth together it does have a very slippery handle so um it does have a nice little swell so would it slide out of your hand if you were using it probably not but i imagine if you were uh using this for hunting or something like this this the scales are going to get pretty slippery we do have some jimping it's not overly done but it's uh it's rather aggressive um yeah high saber grind like i said or if i didn't say it i said it now and a hollow grind with a false swedge up top it is a drop point and let's go try to destroy one of these things running out of crap the baton Let's move you over out of the sun and yeah and if you can't sometimes make a good baton stick find one hit it on something hard and i need to hit it again because i broke it in the wrong freaking section bam bam stick probably not big enough but let's try it anyways let's see if we can go across ways on this guy right here sure it can do it dc 53 is relatively strong and that is not big enough okay. Hold my camera down here and there you guys go hmm. baton's all right Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. This is a pressure treated 4x4. And it's soaking wet. And you can't see. Yeah, not bad. So there's a knot. Let's baton it through that knot. Let's see if we can pick up any edge damage on this. DC 53 steel. With a hollow grind. Gotta say, the hollow grind. And I don't feel any edge damage on there. Still shaving hair. Not as good, but it is. Cool. Let's uh, let's try to feather something here real quick. Let's see if it does that. I suck at feathering. And also, too, I'm thoroughly convinced feathering has a lot to do with the knife and something to do with the wood. I think the wood has definitely has to play a factor in this. But, even with my crappy skills, it did make some feathers. Awesome. So, batons. <laughs> crappy wood, but still. Um, tip test. A little too much there. Not going crazy on the tip test, but still straight. Let's try this one by a crap right here. Get you down where you can even see. Oops. You know. So far out of everything DC-53, uh, I've been pretty impressed with. I mean, it's not a fantastic steel, but it seems to be tough and it seems to uh, not take any damage. Let's see if it still slices paper. Little hiccup. You can see that right there. Little hiccup. You can see the hiccup there too. So yeah, right about, right about there is a, you can't feel it, but there's definitely 
a hiccup. Not bad. Now, let's do a little bit of cross batoning. And then we'll ch check the edge one more time. some lateral on that freaking these hollow grinds they tend to want to cut one way or another they never want to cut straight they want to almost cut i don't know if you can see this but it wants to cut this way following this outside hollow grind the knife kind of wants to turn instead of going straight which is a common theme i've noticed on hollow grind knives Not bad, not bad at all. Let's do something else. That's a deer antler. Kinda want to, for shits and giggles. See how this hollow grind and deer antler do. Let's see. Yeah, it, uh, Picked up a little bit of damage. I'm gonna tell you right now, I can get that out real quick. Let's go back. All right, so uh, DC 53, not too bad actually. Let's see what this paper cut looks like. I mean, it'll still cut paper, but uh, that spot's kind of slacking. <laughs> you can see the, the ripple marks there. Let's, uh, Put this on the old workshop real quick and see what happens. Just a couple strops on the old, uh, what is that? <laughs> Ceramic? Let's see what it brings back to. Just right out of there. And you could spend more time on that. For the most part, that's still We'll pull hairs. That's freaking crazy, you know? For steel that I don't have much experience in, DC 53, the tip held up good. The scales are still strong. Comfort was actually really good. And uh, yeah, the hollow ground, or the hollow ground uh, held up. It's not a super thin hollow ground, which is good. Um, the sheath, which I didn't even say, is kind of garbage. It's, uh, it's fake leather, but it does hold the knife kind of well i could probably flop it out of there if i wanted to but if you were just running it's not going to go nowhere so yeah the watchman which i never even said this in the beginning this is the wf 210 and dc 53 good little uh edc camp knife i should i even say hunting knife you know super steels have their their place but softer steels also do have their place because if you were to hit a bone or something like i just did with the antler and you know instead of uh having to take your knife back home and put it on your uh you know your fancy sharpening equipment or throw it on a belt sander like i would um you could literally just in the field fix this thing right up in seconds and get back to work so yeah decent little knife not bad i'll throw the link the amazon link in there uh, if you're interested, thanks for watching.